All right, for this next uh, test of the modified um, LaserDisc player, um, we're going to be looking at the vectorscope, um, and we're going to look at how well it's, how accurately it's rendering colors. Um, so what I've done is I'm using a video standard, which is not the best disc, but I've got a video essentials coming, so this will have to do for now. We're looking at color bars on the vector scope. Um, how this works is um, each one of the dots that you see um, is a color, and the little squares that are marked here um, are what the colors should be. So for example, green, and you know we've got all the various colors all the way around the scale, and they're, the dots are supposed to land exactly in those little tiny squares. Um, normally, when we test pattern generators can do this, but this is actually doing a really nice job of this. Um, I'm looking at one individual line of horizontal video. This is line 164 and only one field. So it's field 1, line 164, and we're playing this back off the disc. You can see that this is actually um, fairly remarkable um, performance um, for a, for a non-test piece of test equipment. Um, so this is pretty good. Now, the problem I have though is switching it over to the other player, um, we've got kind of a problem because the other player apparently is not set up properly um, or something's incorrect because it's not, it's not generating the correct levels of chroma. Um, so um, once again, this is a stock player. So the, the player is clearly not generating the correct levels of chroma. Um, also, too, what's, what's interesting is notice how much more jitter in the, um, in the actual color rendering there is. Um, the signal's a lot, a lot more jittery than, than looking at the modified player. The modifier player is just really just spot on. And even though this is a, mo this is a much bigger signal, so it, it shows variation more, you notice it's, it's very, very stable versus the non-modified player, which is really jumping around quite a bit in its color rendering. So there's obviously, you know, some, some real differences in how it's rendering color, um, irrespective of the fact that it's just simply the chroma level is wrong um, coming out of the player. Um, but um, what is interesting, though, is, is this amount of this jitter um, in its color rendering. So, the, so what's really happening is the, the, the color of the color is changing as it's playing. Um, and the modified player doesn't do this. The modified player is far more accurate in its, in its, in its rendering of color. Again, I'm sure that's some type of noise. I'm not quite sure what type of noise that would be called, the way it kind of jumps around there, but, but there you have it. Um, also, too, I guess what's interesting is there's a lot less of the interconnecting pattern, which I think is important as well. I don't know what that's called, but there's a lot less of that um, in the modified player. It's much quicker to jump to each color, I guess. Um, whereas here you can see the pattern in between the colors much more clearly. So I'm not sure what that's called, but there's also a difference, obviously, in the color rendering there. Again, all this will be much, much more um, accurate once I get a video essentials disc, uh, which will be coming in about a week. But this is a good first start.